Louisiana Beer Reviews looks at Newcastle Caledonian British British Session India Pale Ale, one of the collaboration beers. The first one was the uh, Scotch Ale, which was so wonderful. Um, I really enjoyed drinking those six. This this was introduced in 2015. From to my knowledge, it's only sold in the variety pack, which is what I bought. Um, the original Newcastle, this one, and then there's another one, a pale ale with a red label. 5.1% um, alcohol, uh, British brewing since 1869. That's the Caledonian. Okay, so it's brewed up there in Scotland. Now the interesting thing is, one of the interesting things is brewed in Scotland, and also the uh, other one, the pale ale, and then... Um, the Newcastle Brown Ale, the flagship beer, is brewed down in England. So they've got one coming from England, two from Scotland, and they, somehow there's a meeting point, and they're putting them in the 12 pack, and they're shipping them to America. Now, the people I talked to from the United Kingdom say that they don't ever see any of these variants. They just get Newcastle Brown Ale. They don't get the Cabbie. They don't get the Blonde Bombshell. They don't get the. Um, the air conditioner. They don't get the um, werewolf. They don't get the. What are some of the other ones? I can't remember. Um, but anyway, I'd like to try it. Now, I, I saw someone put it on Beertopia, I think, or one of those Facebook sites. It's like a an enormous amount of Facebook sites dedicated to beer. So I many you can't keep up with them, right? So, and he was saying, uh, look, this is coming out, and the, then Tom, Tom the Beer Whisperer said, oh, that's going to be really dull. And I was tempted to respond and say, uh, you know, you don't know that, you haven't tried it, but I said, you can't respond to everything. So I just didn't do anything, but I, I, I thought in a way that that comment sort of exemplified an attitude in the craft beer world that if it's from Heineken International it's just going to be dull, it's going to, or it might just be bad. Um, of course, Beer Whisperer, he does a lot of ordinary beers like Genesee Cream Ale in his videos. He doesn't, won't say that they're world class or anything, he just says, you know, they're nice to drink sometimes. So, but I'm going to, um, I'm going to um, give it a rating after I try it this beer. Uh, it says, this session IPA is deep golden in color with floral, grapefruit, hop, aroma, and lemon zesty bitterness to finish. I have been very critical, as, as you might know, of session IPAs because I found they were watery. Yeah, they had hot bitterness, but they were just watery. as a Sapporo glass, which there's no reason to be using it except that I don't use it much. Um, the only one, the only session IPA I really cared for frankly was the uh, Founders because it had some body to it. The other ones just lacked body. But, um, but I mean, you know, some people like them. It's just not a style for me. Um, Hoggy, who looks like he's given up beer reviews. There's so many uh, people that have been giving up beer reviews, video beer reviews. I'm going to have to make a Facebook gallery called the Island of of um, defunct beer reviewers. Anyway, um, okay, okay, it has a thin, rather thin, kind of pillowy white head and a golden, a burnished gold appearance, almost even into the amber range, and there are some nice bubble streams, so it really looks good in the glass. If you watch Hoggy's video, he makes some good comments about the uh, Session IPA style and his contention with it or his uh, opposition to it. <sighs> well, this really smells great. It looks okay, or actually looks pretty nice. I just wish the head was more but um, it's kind of a wide brim glass. But the aroma is so interesting. It's it's um, and they use open flame kettles, okay, in Caledonian Brewery. At the Caledonian Brewery. 
This is reminding me of the Genesee Cream Ale in some ways. This is not a cream ale, right? This is an India Pale Ale Session version, 5.1. 5.1 is a little high for a session, though. IPA, you would think it'd be around four and a half at the most. Once you're getting up above 5%, you know, in America, above 5, 5.1 is really into the malt liquor range, the extra strong beer range. So you session these, too many of these, you're going to, hmm. But it's got that, I sometimes say cream cheese cake frosting. I mean, it's not correct, but it's what it makes me think of. It's sweet, uh, pungent, creamy like malts. You have to try it for yourself. You could probably find these 12 packs pretty readily in the U.S. of A. That's sort of dissipating now, but it was really out front in the aroma, bursting forth. Now it just smells a little fruity, a little spritzy, a little pine, a little, not pine, a little hop resiny like maybe floral. Uh, nothing too strong in the aroma. I mean, this aroma comes out and then it subsides. I would be interested to see what the Beer Whisperer says about it. Okay, some citrus, some even a little touch of pine. It's from the hop resin, of course. Good, hefty, pronounced bitterness in the British style, which is more of your, sometimes I'll say cellar molds, you know. Um, it's not going to be like a West Coast IPA at all. You say, what about an East Coast? Um, well, maybe like the, um, the uh, it, you can't find it anymore. It's been discontinued, which was the, I um, can't remember. Uh, the green label, I said it was a British style. Um, IPA and um, they were making involved ones. But, oh, bass! <laughs> they had the bass stout. It's gone. The bass India Pale Ale. It's gone. That was really British style, and a lot of people that weren't used to that style were really saying, "Oh no, it's it's not right." There is a beer from the West Coast called um, Anchor IPA, which in some ways has similar, and it's more like an East Coast or British. It, it has characters similar to this, like back to the Beer Whisperer. He was saying it had kind of a strange, like he couldn't discern what that flavor was. And I was saying, yeah, it had like an olive oil note to it. And he was saying, yeah, it's, it's so peculiar, but good. Um, this one is peculiar, but good. Um, the people at the party, now I brought this to a party, and they don't get on the internet and do beer research. They drink a fairly good amount of it. These were college graduates or still college students. My daughter had graduated, and she had a party, and they, they blew through these. I took two, this and the red, to take back, because I knew if I, and I didn't want to drink them there, because I wanted to review it. I knew uh, they were going to go through it, and my daughter said, oh yeah, they were just raving about it. So. Um, I'm raving about this. This one has some body to it. It has a fairly crisp, easygoing, and refreshing finish. Um, session IPA? Mm, I don't know about all that. They should have just said British style IPA, maybe. It reminds me of the Fuller's, the Samuel Smith's India Ale, and even in some ways, it reminds me of Old Speckled Hen and Abbott Ale. It does all of those? It's somewhere in between those different brands. Well, I think they've been hitting a lot of home runs. 
or scoring a lot of goals or touchdowns or whatever terminology you want to use. The werewolf was really delicious. The cabbie was fantastic. The blonde bombshell was wonderful. The Caledonian and Newcastle Caledonian Scotch Ale was fabulous. I love the brown ale. And um, this one is really good. So um, I just thought, and even that, his comment kind of put that in my head. I was thinking, yeah, it might be kind of dull. But really, it is not dull. It's so enjoyable. So if you see it, buy and try it. I think you'll love it. I would give it Solid A, most excellent. So les et les bon temps roule. A most excellent beer from Heineken International's Newcastle Caledonian subsidiary. And y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana.